filling up my gas car. I used to do this every 10 days. It was inconvenient, dirty, smelly, bad for the planet and time consuming, and even in my gas powered econo box it cost me about 54 euro each time. I hated it. I mean I really hated it. And now I do this instead. And this got me thinking. Plugging in a car, filling up a car, they're the same physical activity, you get the same result, but why do I absolutely hate one and really love the other? That's something for the psychologists to figure out. Now some details about the car I bought. It's a Peugeot Ion, which is the same as a Citroen C0, which is the same as a Mitsubishi Imiev. In fact, these three cars are all made by Mitsubishi, but with different badges. So despite the Peugeot badge, the motor, body and electrics are all Mitsubishi. And this is good, because I don't think Peugeot has made a reliable car in... well, ever. Now some basic technical details. This car has a 16 kilowatt hour battery pack, made up of 88 individual cells operating at 330 volts. On a full charge, which costs less than one of these, the car can drive between 120 and 130 kilometers in real world conditions on a single charge. The motor is the size of a watermelon and is positioned above the rear wheels, putting out a maximum of 47 kilowatts. Perfect for a car this size. Now as you've probably noticed, this is quite a small car. However, it's perfect for European side streets and parking spaces. As you can see, they can get pretty ridiculously small, even for my gas car. But the reason my electric car is so small and only puts out 47 kilowatts is because it's a K-class car. In Japan, cars under 47 kilowatts and such small dimensions get tax breaks. Not only that, in some areas in Japan, you need to prove you have a parking space before you're allowed to buy a car. But K-class cars are often exempt from this rule. Charging the car can be done in two ways. On the right hand side there's a Type 1 or J1772 plug. These plug into the wall socket with the charger supplied and all European wall outlets are rated at 250 volts and 16 amps. So this means charging the car takes 4 or 5 hours from flat on a regular socket. On the left hand side however is a Chadimo socket for faster charging. This puts high voltage DC power straight into the battery pack and can recharge the car to 80% full in around 25 minutes. Now, enough technical stuff, let's go for a drive. Alright, first journey is to the other side of town to a shopping centre called Avion. We're enjoying a little trip through Ikea. Yeah, we caught up with a friend that we haven't seen in years. <laughs> and now we're going to go home, recharge and then head off to Austria. After getting back, we plugged in the car to top up for a couple of hours before heading on our next leg of the journey, this time to a lake in Austria. Okay, leg two of the journey begins, the car is charged, and now we are off for a very long drive to Neusiedl am See, is that right? Neusiedl am See, yes. Neusiedl am See in Austria. So, happy journeys. Right, we're crossing over the Danube River and in a second we're going to be going over the Austrian border and entering Austria. Okay, and now we're in Austria. Oh, and the roads have got much smoother. <laughs> so we've got about 40 k's or so to go and then uh, we'll get to our cafe. We were going to go swimming, but not in weather like this, so we'll just have a coffee. It's currently blowing a gale and I can feel the car pushing against the wind and I'm aware like riding a bike against the wind this can make the car work really hard so let's hope it doesn't chew through too much electricity. Okay, we're in Neusiedl Amtse and we have one bar above halfway, which is better than what I thought because we've been pushing through some really hard headwinds and doing highway speeds for the last 52 kilometers. But we're just pulling into the car park now and uh, we're going to go treat ourselves with a coffee after burning zero grams of carbon. And we're here. Look at that. One bar above halfway despite high speed and high winds. Oh, that is bloody brilliant. Sweet. This car is awesome. Yeah. 
Even though I'm sweet enough, I still need to sweeten my drink. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let's enjoy our Austrian coffees. Cheers. So how was your coffee? It was very good and now let's head back into the electric car. <laughs> All right, coffee's complete. We're on our way back to the car, and I worked out that the electricity to get here was 49 cents, and the coffee's cost seven euro. <laughs> That's amazing. Back to Slovakia. It's now 20 past 8 and uh, we're in Austria, just about to cross the border back into Slovakia. Uh, it's been an unremarkable journey, despite the strong headwind and the fact that we've had to drive at speed and the little city car that's not designed at speed, we've done it well. And now we are crossing the line and we're in Slovakia now. Yeah, you can feel it. Yeah, the roads are changed. <laughs> and uh, we've got another 15 kilometers or so to get home. Well. Mission successful. Well, we had nothing to worry about. We got home with one bar remaining, but I know that even if we ran out, there'd still be a good 15, 20 kilometers of range left after that. And there's a charging station back in town, so good job, little car, drink up. <laughs>